Hello, hope this finds you well, starting off your Monday. Today I have something new starting here on the channel, a new series with an episode we'll do from time to time, not weekly, maybe, you know, once, twice a month, just have to see how things go. Um, Adventures with Flimsy. <laughs> so, um, I thought I would dip my toes into sharing some adventures in real life here on the channel. Uh, some hobbies, and one of those hobbies being snorkeling, which I just started up uh, this past uh, summer. Well, yes, we're kind of going to fall now, so I technically started in July, got a little bit of a late start just due to travels and everything happening in June. Um, but I had some uh, friends and my family's like, hey, we want you to, uh, to do a video when you go snorkeling, because I said I, I could because I have a GoPro. Um, so I said, sure. And um, now I'm sharing a mostly similar video uh, with you here. I'm going over <coughs> my snorkeling adventure um, not, uh, in the North Sea. I'm at a, a beach not too far away from where Mrs. Flims and I live, and uh, this is a really uh, beautiful place. So I hope you liked today's video as this is going to transition to um, me talking about the snorkel gear I'm wearing and then I'll have commentary over the video uh, while we are in the water. So hope you enjoy. Hey, so we're back here at Vigdal Stranen today. You show them where we're at. And so we're getting ready to go. I'm ready, getting ready to go into the water. But uh, I figured I'd probably just show you some things. So this is a wetsuit. It's a three millimeter uh, thick wetsuit. So I would probably be better off with a seven, but it's a three. Other thing is we have uh, kind of booties. Uh, I think these are five millimeter thick. So this actually, if I don't have these, uh, I don't last in the water as long, maybe seven, eight minutes with them. I last up to uh, closer to 15 minutes just because it's basically the cold water here, uh, around 57 Fahrenheit and uh, where it's escaping from your body, your heat. So this is helping keep the heat in. Next place would be like your head and your hands. So I, I do want to get gloves at some point because you know, cold water, you put it on your wrist, blood flow, circulation. We have our snorkel. So this is a really good one. So if any water actually comes into this, it just automatically uh, goes out uh, here without me having to. We have some of uh, these uh, balls here. So when we go underwater, they come up and they prevent any air, uh, water coming down in. Uh, so this works out really well. And also just some carbon um, ex exhalation there. Then we have our tempered glass uh, goggles. So these work really good. So sometimes it fall, might, if it does fog up a little bit on you, you just kind of pop it off and then let some water come in, pop it out, make sure it's a tight fit. And then we have our fins, which are super helpful. Uh, you don't even use your hands when you're snorkeling, just looking around, maybe you're turning your direction. Um, but these help go through the water a lot quicker um, and uh, you're exerting a lot less energy. So it's meant to be very like peaceful. You just take your time so you're not overexerting yourself when you're snorkeling. And the last thing that I do is I have um, for myself is I have these water earplugs. Uh, so I put them in both the ears and there's just this cord behind me. Uh, and I just do that because I've had tubes in my ears and I feel like it's super annoying when water uh, gets into my ears. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna get ready to go in. We actually have to walk in backwards with the flippers. Can't really walk forward with big feet like crown feet like this. Um, and then I'm gonna do some commentary over the footage um, after I'm already in the water. Um, but I won't be talking during the actual recording of this because naturally I can't. So into the water we go. All right, so we're gonna start off here with just some footage of being in the water. I'm not showing too much in the beginning here. Uh, here's an example where usually after the first bit of being in, the snorkel uh, goggles, they kind of fog up a bit, so then I have to let some water in and then I dump it out the bottom. And then we go back on the snorkeling and my vision is uh, much clearer here. In the beginning, I'm going to be pretty shaky with the footage because I was still adjusting to the cold temperature of the water. Um, I'm going to skip ahead by about three minutes or so. But what I did want to show, uh, at least what we're about to come up on, is this little guy who I saw yesterday. And if you know the name of the fish, please let me know in the comments. And um, we'll see another one later, a much better look at. 
So here, basic, at this point we've pretty much acclimated to the water about three minutes later in a wetsuit. I'll kind of have to explain what a wetsuit is here in just a minute. But we're going along this edge between the sand and seafloor and then also a lot of this uh, seaweed, this uh, vegetation on the bottom of the floor. And moving along here, and it's pretty nice. I'm trying to find a large school of fish. We've actually passed a couple schools of fish, but don't worry, we'll be spending a lot of time uh, with some fish here shortly. But I want to show you this little jellyfish. I saw more yesterday, and I'll freeze the camera here. Um, but they have just been chilling out, and I'm pretty sure this is just a jellyfish. It's just maybe uh, young is growing, but you can see there's a larger... Uh, I think it's a sea trout. I don't know. We'll see him again later, but he's just been chilling out there. Then when I come by, uh, he goes into that little cove there. So, um, a wetsuit, um, a pretty good explanation of it by National Geographic is that it's a special suit worn by people who want to spend a lot of time in the water. Wetsuits are usually worn by swimmers, divers, or surfers who swim in cold water. Wetsuits insulate the swimmers or help them retain body heat. This in turn helps the swimmers avoid hypothermia, a dangerous low body temperature. And wetsuits are made of neoprene, so it traps a thin layer of water between the neoprene and the wearer's skin. So the wearer is always wet, um, but that's why it's called a wetsuit. Body heat helps warm, uh, warms the layer of trapped water and it helps keep the wearer warm. So here I really like this uh, part because um, I look to the right here and you can see the sun just shining right down uh, through the surface uh, down into here. And what you might not see here, and what I didn't see, is I'm looking for a large school of fish as I said a little bit ago. And I know they're somewhere, they were around here yesterday. So they're blending in really well, but there's actually a lot of these small fish here. And it won't be until I swim further forward and I look back behind me that there they are. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure what species of fish this is, as I'm going to dive down here uh, and get a better view. Yeah, so there with the GoPro, you can see a little bit better view of them. I'm not entirely sure what species of fish they are, but I'm sh I think there's some type of sea trout, fjord trout. Um, so if you do know, uh, let me know in the comments. As I, there's so many fish species here and I've barely scratched the surface in trying to learn and uh, remember them. I have been going through Google Images and just trying to get an idea of what type of uh, fish these were. Um, and if, as best I can figure is that they're just some type of trout. Um, and this is a little bit of a nursery for them. Uh, so they're just chilling in here. They can go uh, down and it's for safe refuge. Uh, every so often, this is I think the second or third time I've done it, uh, I surface and I look to see what's going on around me. It's really important when you're snorkeling uh, to be able to pay attention to your surroundings in case it's a boater or something like that. Not a major issue here in Vigdal uh, which is just, uh, it's in Sola. It's uh, southwest of Sola, maybe like, I don't know, 10 minutes or less from the airport. But we're just keeping an eye, seeing what's going on, because we want to be aware of what's happening here. But I saw this little uh, hole, I guess, in the vegetation, so I decided that I wanted to uh, swim down and get a little closer look. You can see there's some uh, fish in here, and we're back up pretty quick. Sometimes I think a diver's belt would just help uh, being able to stay uh, down lower for longer, and I wouldn't have to fight as much or exert myself physically as much just to get down lower. An example of that little fish I saw earlier that I was pointing out. Uh, so they really cling close to the vegetation. They blend in, of course, really well with their uh, skin color as well. So if you do know uh, the name of that, please let me know. So here we're moving a little bit too far to the left. Um, the waves, you can see it's, it's pretty gentle today, but just have to be mindful of how close we are getting to the rocks. As you can see them splashing up against uh, the side of the land there. And I'm also taking a little bit of time to look at some of the vegetation. So you can see some uh, snails uh, here that are clinging to the vegetation. Um, and basically I'm working my way back to be with that school uh, of fish again. So uh, this is in the North Sea, uh, an arm extension of the Atlantic Ocean. So the water temperature is probably around 57, 58 Fahrenheit. Um, I'm more familiar with that. I'm not entirely sure what that would be uh, equated to in Celsius, but maybe I can uh, pull up my converter here. So I much prefer the warmer waters of the Gulf Shores in Florida, uh, as that's just much nicer and enjoyable. So still going along, seeing what's happening here. Um, 
exploring the vegetation more. Now, I tend to save swimming over this vegetation part uh, later, as you're kind of getting a look to see what I look like <laughs> when I'm going through snorkeling. Um, because the heat is absorbed more by the vegetation, so the water actually feels a little more warmer, just slightly uh, above here, so it helps lengthen my time uh, in the water. Here I took a break and pausing the recording and then started back up again. I was playing with some features of the GoPro. It's a uh, GoPro um, Hero 7. Or is it just GoPro Black 7? I have it right here. GoPro to 7. Yeah, black. Um, maybe not the Hero version, but just 7 black. Uh, so that means that uh, I don't have a case on this GoPro because you can go uh, up to 33 feet deep uh, with this. <laughs> For uh, those of you who do not speak feet, let me uh, exchange that into meters. Almost there. 33. means I can go 10 meters deep. Uh, without having to have a special waterproof case here on the GoPro. So um, the footage has just been really clear <laughs> and so that I'm just really grateful for that. I was kind of learning what is underwater photography, videography uh, like. Uh, so there some points actually when we're kind of being still, you can see the settlement kind of builds up around us. Um, or just, I'm not sure exactly it is in the water, but then the vision gets a little blurred. But as soon as we start moving again, it actually comes uh, clear again. It's really minor, but because I try to keep moving for the most part so that doesn't happen so much. But moving along here, again, you can see all the fish as we're going to go down and try to get a better uh, angle with them. So I'm, this time I'm trying to stay down just a little bit longer um, so you can see them a bit better. So you can see, naturally, whenever I come to them, they go back over the vegetation uh, for safety and shelter. Um, I think one for two reasons. One, they can hide. They can go down underneath vegetation. And the secondly is they blend in, as you kind of saw we missed them completely uh, earlier on. So I kind of like to go along the edge here, because that tends to be where the fish are hanging out at, especially there's going to be a larger trout uh, we're going to see later on. And if you're seeing those little darker black circles on this ocean floor, I will talk about those shortly um, and sharing uh, what exactly those are because I saw them a while back and I uh, went snorkeling in Solastranen and I had no clue what they were. So here we are just, again, we're going back into uh, a little farther back behind. I wanted to get a shot of myself with all the fish in the back. I mean, probably we've seen around 200, if not more. I didn't really try focus on counting, but going under here. And you can hear a little bit of kicking uh, of using the flippers in the background. So it just helps so much. If you don't have flippers when you're snorkeling, uh, it would just be abysmal. <laughs> like you'd be exhausting yourself so much. So I'm really grateful to have them. So here you're seeing just what it looks like uh, head on. Uh, it looks like when I'm snorkeling here. It's mostly just working the legs uh, back and forth and kicking. And I will use a hand to just kind of reorient myself if I'm turning um, back into a better di different direction. I can just simply use the fins, but it tends to be just a little bit easier to use a hand just to get myself uh, turned around. So there's a couple of these different schools. So I don't know if this is the same school that we saw um, earlier, but just spending a little more time hanging out with them. So I'm actually at this point, I'm beginning to work my way back. Um, towards uh, land. <laughs> um, but here, there's actually going to be a large trout um, down in there. So I'm actually going to freeze the screen uh, when we see him. And you can see him a little bit in there. Um, but when I dive down and come towards him, he's going to go back into coverage. So there you can see him much larger than the others here. He's probably about three or four times larger than these other uh, smaller guys. So um, again, when we approach them, they just go back into shelter. Um, but it has been fun to kind of watch how they're curious. Um, they keep their distance a little bit, um, but that's about it. They just uh, hang around. They don't, they don't think they see me too much as a threat. So the water here uh, depth is mm, probably about seven to eight meters. Um, maybe around 20 to 25 feet, and then the, now it's going more towards the shallower uh, water. So even if I drop the GoPro, it wouldn't be a big deal. I'm still kind of working on adjusting the uh, air pressure in my ears when I do dive down, because uh, sometimes it can hurt just a little bit. 
And there's another sea trout. He's a bit bigger, so I actually, when I was going through the footage, I didn't catch this one originally. So uh, you get to see him there. He's not as uh, jumpy as the other one. So the technique is usually when you're going uh, deep, uh, further underwater, at the pressure, you kind of just hold your nose and then you kind of uh, exert some um, kind of blow without actually ex exerting any air um, into more like your eardrums to kind of pop and helps readjust the, the air in your uh, eardrums. So I'm still figuring that out. I don't know if, so if because of the earplugs I have and if that messes with that a little bit. Um, just because I like having it, I don't have to worry about water getting in my ears because it's just super frustrating and I don't like having water trapped in my ears. So again, here's another small little guy. He's just chilling out in the vegetation. So I've been looking and looking and I do not know uh, the name of that species of fish. Now yesterday I did see a mackerel uh, up in here swimming around. And mackerels are really shiny and they really stick out. Um, pretty fast swimmers around. Uh, he didn't let me get anywhere near as close as the other fish have. As he, I followed him around, but he probably kept oh, mm, seven, eight meters distance away from me. Um, so I don't know, 25 or so feet. So here again, we're just surfacing, checking our surroundings. It's important. Uh, typically, what helps best when you're snorkeling is having a snorkeling uh, buddy uh, to be with. It's much safer to snorkel with someone uh, than without, especially if you're diving. You really would want to have someone diving with you in case of emergency. So Mrs. Flimsy's just keeping an eye from the shore that she tends to sometimes walk along and track with me. Uh, not that she could help if this emergency came up in a pinch, but uh, at this point, this, I think this is my fifth or sixth time snorkeling and I feel pretty comfortable. I keep testing out new things each time I go out just to get the hang of snorkeling a bit more um, and kind of not pushing the limits, that's, that's not the correct way to say. Um, but just things to help my comfort level, exerting less energy, holding my breath longer underwater, just those type of common things. So here I'm just going along, just seeing a little bit more what's happening here in more of these rocks and vegetation. Uh, so you're seeing those things on the bottom, <laughs> and we'll talk about those here in a minute. I'm actually going to have to pause the footage when the time comes. Uh, so we're going to see some uh, a lot closer. Um, so I didn't know what these were at first, so it kind of was very interesting. So we're going to go down here now and actually talk about it. So this is um, sand poop is the best way I can phrase it. Uh, so these uh, come from these type of worms. They're also commonly called acorn worms. I don't know if that's the same species of here um, in Norway. Um, but they ingest sediments that are mixed with organic material. Um, and then they ex excrete the inorganic material while digesting the organic material. And so basically it's just a bunch of sand that looks like poop. So um, if you've been swimming in like, for example, Solastronin, uh, you would definitely have probably stepped in it because it's just everywhere. So it's just mostly just inorganic sand material. Um, so fun fact. <laughs> So we're getting maybe just a few minutes left of footage here. So I'm going to be looking a little bit more at the vegetation on the rocks on the bottom here. Of course, in the shallower water, the temperature is a bit warmer. Uh, so this wetsuit really helps. It's, um, as I said in the beginning, it's about three millimeter uh, thick wetsuit, um, but a five or seven would be better for these uh, colder temperatures. Uh, here in the North Sea, especially from further north towards like the Fulton Islands or something like that. So just a quick pause there, just seeing some of the, the coral, the vegetation on the rock here. So yeah, so definitely a, a, there's a lot to see. Uh, yesterday when I did go snorkeling, the visibility was a bit clearer. The water wasn't as chopped up per se as much. Um, so probably lost several feet or maybe like a meter, two meters of visibility. Um, the waves weren't bad by any means, as you've seen, um, but it's enough to affect uh, visually what we're able to uh, see in terms of the distance. Because there's waters that's even clearer than this here in Norway. Um, I mean, it's been clear here, but in the rivers uh, and other places, um, just uh, much better in terms of the visibility compared to something you might see in the US. Well, except you got the west, of course, like Montana and stuff and Wyoming. But now we're taking, we're coming to a close, so I'm taking off the fins. So there's just a button release on either side um, because water is pretty shallow here. I'm going to walk out. 
So once we stand up, we'll be taking the uh, goggles and dis detaching the snorkel. It's kind of funny because usually in these situations, if I'm not uh, conscious, uh, after kind of like drooling around the snorkel piece, sometimes I have just come out of the water and I have a bunch of drool. <laughs> so it looks a very majestic sight. <laughs> but it actually wasn't very bad today. Uh, so that's why I'm just making sure that uh, I'm camera ready. <laughs> And then we're going to take out the earpieces and then I'm going to talk a little bit more here um, as we go to uh, land. So I hope you liked this uh, footage today and being in Big Del Stalin. So that is uh, snorkeling in Big Del Stalin. A little taste of it, at least on this side. So I'll be uh, excited to edit this and get it all set. Because that was fun, but I'm really cold right now. <laughs> So if you're still here and you like this video today, please let me know in the comments if you appreciated a little bit of a, a change of pace in having this Adventures with Flimsy and it just helps me gauge if you're actually interested in this type of stuff if I were to do more videos like this or not. So please give me your feedback in the comments below. I read all your comments. So if you liked this video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it and hope you have a good week. Take care.